I talk a lot about fading prompts and continuing to teach and work on mastering a skill and that a skill is not truly mastered until all prompting has been removed and your student or loved one is displaying a skill at an independent level. So that means all visuals, that means all assistance of any kind is able to be removed and then the accurate responses maintain and also at an independent level in order for a skill to be mastered and to move on to the next level or the next skill. And so I wanna talk a little bit about self-monitoring. So we wanna teach our children and loved ones how to accurately, re accurately report completion or correct responding of engagement in a life skill or an academic response or a social skill or just with regards to their behavioral displays, right? So if we're gonna be truly independent, we need our children and loved ones to be able to monitor their own behavior. And so then what happens? They don't need us. They don't need someone else to check in for feedback. They don't need the feedback. They don't need the corrective feedback and responses, right? It's just completely independent. And then they're gonna self-correct. They're gonna self-identify and they're gonna correct their own behavior. And this starts with self-monitoring. And so I wanna chat for a second about just some early stages of self-monitoring. These can be very simple things. It can be something of, okay, we're gonna complete a skill and at the end, you're gonna give me a thumbs up, thumbs middle or thumbs down, whether you gave me the correct response, whether you completed this task without arguing, escape motivated behavior, whatever the challenge is, what we're gonna target for self-monitoring is after completion of that task or activity, just a thumbs up, thumbs middle, thumbs down. I like to use gestures or a visual, um, give yourself a smiley face or just move on to the next activity. Um, don't give um, negative feedback, right? So I don't want them to identify that they yelled. I don't want them to identify that they hit, right? Because that's giving attention to inappropriate behaviors. It's just giving feedback of those positive replacement behaviors only and not necessarily the challenging behaviors or incorrect responses that we don't wanna see. I also like using gestures or just a picture or a checkoff system, something like that, as opposed to kind of expressively identifying to start with because um, I think it just prevents the door from being opened of arguing and there just being a back and forth verbal exchange about negative behaviors. Um, if it's just a quick gesture or a quick picture move on, then you're just moving on and that's all that matters. But keep in mind, here's the most important thing. So let's say that a challenging behavior occurs and let's say that the student correctly identifies, I get a thumbs up, or they correctly identify that I need to go on to the next activity that I'm not giving myself a smiley face or a check mark or a tally mark for that activity. They've self-monitored their own behavior. They identified that the challenging behavior occurred or they responded inaccurately and they have correctly identified that. When teaching self-monitoring, step one, we're going to reinforce that. Hmm, sounds a little bit odd and challenging, right? So I need to reinforce them for displaying a challenging behavior. No, what you're reinforcing is and providing that descriptive praise of, mm, we can probably do better next time, no problem, but I like how you were aware that you displayed a behavior that gave us a thumbs down and you gave me a thumbs down. That's really hard to do. And I love how you accurately told me, hmm, my behavior matched a thumbs down. Way to go, giving me a thumbs down and then you move on, right? So it feels really odd to reinforce that. However, if we want our children and loved ones to accurately self-monitor their behavior, they're gonna have to be able to not only just self-monitor when they're doing things so wonderful and good and they deserve all rewards, right? It's also super hard to self-identify. Hmm, I messed up. I could have done better. Yep, that trial stunk and I have to self-identify and self-monitor that behavior and then move on. And so the first step is to just reinforce that. And then the second level would be, now we can um, assign some reinforcement for obtaining so many thumbs up or so many check marks, so many smiley faces, whatever um, the case may be. Um, so we want to teach our children and loved ones to self-identify and self-monitor their displays of incorrect behavior, challenging behavior, as well as those positive replacement behaviors. And we're gonna reinforce that. I agree. I gave you a thumbs down. You also gave yourself a thumbs down. Correct. We're going to reinforce that. Teach that self-monitoring skill and don't move on past a skill and master it until our children and loved ones can self-monitor and self-identify those correct responses because what's going to happen? That skill is going to maintain at a level of mastery probably for a lifetime because they can self-monitor it themselves.